that, I want to bring in my panel, Matt Schlapp, chairman of the American Conservative Union and a Trump supporter. Jason Johnson is politics editor at TheRoot.com, as well as a politics and journalism professor at Morgan State University. Good to see you both. So, Matt, we've sure. gotten to a point where this entire Russia investigation, at least on the House side, is on hold indefinitely. We don't know when the next thing is going to happen. Over some surveillance information that the chairman himself says doesn't even involve Russia. Is this any way to run a railroad? Yeah, I think uh, he's actually being careful to make sure that the conversations he needs to have offline and the conversations they need to have not in a public venue occur before the public you know, when hearings. When you say that, here's what I think. I think last week... Um, we heard from the podium from Sean Spicer when they were when they were asking about the president. This is not a dictatorship. It sounds like you think that the chairman should be able to operate totally solo, find out what he needs to find out, and then decide what he shares with the other members of the no, committee. No, but the chair, when you have the gavel, there's certain responsibility that comes with that gavel. The American people gave the Republicans the majority in both the House and the Senate, and that's why Republicans have these gavels. I think these two members on the House side actually have a good relationship. I think this is going to work throughout the investigation. But, Chris, these are very, very serious charges, not just the fact of what Russia tried to do. And I'm very worried about what Russia tried to do. And I want to have, as a Trump supporter, I want to have answers. Uh, I think uh, Vladimir Putin has tried to really meddle in things uh, that caused me great concern. By the same token, I think that I want to hear eventually what Devin Nunes has to say about the information he's learned about the surveillance done on the Trump team. These are very serious questions. I just want to make sure I, I understand want to have you, the Matt, answers in both you don't areas. think that he owes an answer to the question you just asked, not to me, not to you, but to the other people on the Intelligence Committee. Yeah, every, told neither Republicans nor Democrats. Uh, nothing's going to change between now and then about what he went right. before the public there and right. the public on Capitol Hill and let made me a statement. Let me assure you, Chris, everyone is going to hear the information about what happened with Russia in our elections, Russia with hacking, and what happened on surveillance of the Trump team. All the information is gonna come out. Don't hyperventilate if a week or a day goes by where they try to do it in a careful way. As you, I think you're complimenting the Senate for being more methodical about it. We should be methodical about this, but all the answers are coming out. If they're good for the president or bad for the president, they're all going to spell out. Uh, and methodical is one way to look at it. I think cooperative is another way to look at it. They both have nice things to say about each other. Jason, is this, maybe though, uh, let's give Devin Nunes the benefit of the doubt. Is this him being methodical, being careful, not wanting to get ahead of what we all know is a very politically charged issue? No, he's being a lackey for the president. Look, it's his job. We may not have a right to know all this information yet as the average American citizen, but the rest of the committee does. It's their job to investigate Russia. It's not their job to pursue conspiracy theories from the President of the United States. If I send you to the grocery store to get me milk and eggs and you come back with orange juice, you didn't do your job. His job is to investigate Russia. And to the degree that he wants to dance around and perform and say, well, I have to find this out and find that out, that's not his job. And this notion that President Obama was somehow surveilling President Trump and trying to rig the election, because that's really the core of where that conspiracy theory came from, it's nonsense. And the FBI and Paul Ryan and several other prominent Republicans and anyone with common sense knows that's not true. That's he's not stalling right. and he's distracting. Well, right. This let's, isn't beneficial. Let me, let me, if I can, just uh, let me say what we think we do know. Mm -hmm. The president used this word wiretap, which all the people you referenced said there's no evidence of that. But the question of surveillance is very real. And the fact is we already know that Mike Flynn was surveilled and he was unmasked, which is illegal. Now, Mike Flynn has his own issues and his own legal questions, which are fair to bring up as well. But the unmasking of citizens that get caught up in surveillance is not right. And for one administration to be able to look at transcripts from conversations from the administration, if that happened, Chris, I don't know if that happened, but it's been, it's been reported in serious media outlets that that happened. The, the American people need to know exactly what was done here. There's a lot of open questions. That's why I'm glad the investigation is going on. Furthermore, what Devin Nunez did, you're going to get the answers to the information he and who he talked to eventually in this process. He has said All I will say is that. he said he's not going to do he that. He said he's not going to do that now. I, I want but to read the information quote if I can. Is part of the <laughs> let, let me read you a quote. Is, I mean, obviously. By the way, it has nothing to do with Russia. That conversation in the White House had nothing to do with the Russian investigation. The President it's about of the United other States surveillance. said that he was being wiretapped. Now he wants to change it to surveillance. At the end of the day, it is a ridiculous conspiracy theory but if because we take he consistently it back, said that Russia has nothing to do with it. If we take Chris, it back to think? Devin Nunes, if we take it back to Devin Nunes, the, the concern a lot of people have, and this includes now a Republican, 
is that there's a conflict of interest here. Here's a guy who helped run the transition. Here's a guy who showed up at the White House, talked to the president before he talked to his fellow committee members, Republican and Democrat, and he's supposed to be independent and charged with his investigation. I want to read you a quote from the so New it, Yorker. It, it, I want to read you a quote from the New Yorker. Ryan Lizza says it's clear that the White House and Nunes coordinated a strategy of focusing on surveillance collection. I'm, I'm quoting from this article. The White House clearly indicated to me, meaning Ryan, that it knew Nunes would highlight this issue. It's backdoor surveillance where it's not just incidental, it's systematic, the White House official said. Watch Nunes today. Sure enough, at last Monday's hearing, Nunes asked in his opening statement, were the communications of or associates of any campaign subject to any kind of improper surveillance. And then the next day he's on the White House grounds to see intelligence reports. That doesn't say to you there's an issue there? I don't think there's any conflict with being a Republican. The American people put Republicans in charge of Congress. The Republicans are going to run all the committees, Chris, and many of them, almost every single one of them, supported Donald Trump. If you follow your reasoning logically, they would have to recuse themselves from anything. That's absurd. But the question is this. We're covering about all the theatrics. Let's get to the issues. Now, I agree with you. In this period of time where we don't have the information and they don't have hearings, that, you know, you can speculate. But eventually this all becomes public. If there is, no, if, if the Obama administration acted properly, then we all owe him an apology. If, if there was inappropriate action, I think we all ought to take it seriously because this, this incidental idea that you can pick up the conversations of your political enemies, if, if a conservative was doing it, but that's you would not be the outraged. Issue. But that's it not is the, the issue. issue. That's not the issue. Look, the issue. Look, do these guys have to wear matching ties and underwear before we say there's coordination? I'm an American citizen. I'm not a partisan. When, 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 when Loretta Lynch met with Bill Clinton, when, when, Loretta, when Loretta Lynch met on the Parmac with Bill Clinton, I thought that was a problem, too. If we have inappropriate communication, between people who are supposed to be investigating an issue and the person being investigated, that is a violation of their responsibility. Meantime, meantime, There's nothing inappropriate there. with the Republicans and Democrats sneaking into the, the White House, House to get information to deliver you know, what Trump wants it's to get not done. Sneaking. That's not his it's job. Not we're going to put that on hold. because There's we, a process another, to get into that place, and it's not sneaking. It's all publicly available. But the public that has not been made public. It will just exactly. days, it will just exactly. days after the GOP's bruising defeat on health care, and of course the president uh, pledging to move on, he now says health care is not dead. So here's what he told a group of senators last night. I have no doubt that that's going to happen very quickly. I think it will actually. I think it's going to happen because we've all been promising, Democrat, Republican, we've all been promising that to the American people. Let's go live to the White House. NBC's Kristen Welker has been standing by patiently for us. So, is an Obamacare repeal back on the table, Kristen? I think it's hard to say that it's back on the table, Chris. I think what is happening is that you're seeing some top advisors here, as well as lawmakers on the Hill, start to revisit the issue. But the question is, how realistic it is and how far along in the process are they? We understand that Chief Strategist Steve Bannon, according to recent reports, may have reached out to some lawmakers on Capitol Hill to talk about the way forward. This is certainly something that House Speaker Paul Ryan has signaled, that he has continued to keep the discussions going about how to move forward with health care. Nancy Pelosi, interestingly, uh, has also signaled to her fellow Democrats, look, the fact that the Republicans' initial plan to repeal and replace Obamacare care failed is a victory. However, let's talk about ways to improve health care. What's significant about that, Chris, is there's broad agreement across the board that there is room for improvement when it comes to health care. But there continues to be deep divisions about how specifically to move forward. And of course, President Trump, after the health care bill failed last week, signaled a willingness to work with Democrats. Yesterday, we pressed Press Secretary Sean Spicer about whether or not there had actually been any outreach to Democrats. No word yet if that has actually happened. But there is a sense that Republicans, that this White House needs to go about this in a different way after they were effectively defied by the Freedom Caucus, the conservative branch of the party on the health care bill, that they need to reach out to moderates and Democrats. At this point, though, the White House signaling that there's no real plan. So it's not clear, Chris, that this is something that can happen this year. Kristen Welker, thank you very much. I want to bring our panel back in. You know, Politico uh, pointed out today that the president and uh, uh, Senator Schumer had not spoken one on one since he took office. Wow. So <laughs> I want to play what happened last night when the president met with a group of senators. Let's listen. So I think we're going to have some very 
good relationships. Right, Chuck? I see Chuck. Hello, Chuck. <laughs> well, that was, I guess, a little bit of Democratic outreach. I've only got 30 seconds for you both, but can health care move forward? Understanding that both sides think there are things that need to be fixed. There are plenty of things that need to be fixed in the Affordable Care Act. It's not going to move forward. Democrats have no incentive to work with this president, and he has absolutely no integrity for dealing with this issue. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. What's it has happen to happen, and I think they're going to keep trying. I think it's a political necessity for Republicans. Is Failing... it a smart move after the failure on Friday? You don't have to do it immediately, but they have to get it done this year. They definitely have to get it done this Congress. We cannot go back to the voters and say we failed to pass an Obamacare replacement. It's unacceptable. All right, Matt. Jason, if you come back, could you be a little more passionate? <laughs> we'll try. We'll okay. try. It's early. He's a college it. professor. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> what can you do? Thank you, gentlemen. I really appreciate it.